Imagine you are a physician on board the International Space Station. Something happened. Your colleague uh, astronauts start to fall in sick one by one. You tried everything in your power to cure them, but you couldn't. They started to die. Then you realized you are next. <music> Harry's Book Cafe. That introduction is the basic uh, storyline of the book Gravity by Taz Garrison. Taz Garrison started her career as a physician and she worked as a doctor in Hawaii. Whilst she was a doctor, she started to write uh, thriller books. The first two wasn't very successful. However, the third one, The Surgeon, became an overnight success. Also, her following up to The Surgeon, The Apprentice, was also absolutely amazing. Uh, even now, I have read them many, many years ago. Even now, they remain some of my favorite crime novels uh, that I have ever, ever read. Taz Garrison, because of her medical background, she was able to describe the uh, A&E in the UK speaking, or ER in American speak, uh, vividly, you know, the life and death uh, emergency, she was able to describe them, you know, defibrillators and saving patients. It was like watching drama. It was really, really re realistic um, because of her medical background. So I really enjoy reading her books. And so yeah, that's, that's the basic info of the author. Um, now I'll go back to the story. So Gravity is one of her lesser known novels. She was really, well known for the um, the Surgeon series, um, Gravity is the story about a mysterious disease that somehow has infiltrated the International Space Station. And on board that space station is a surgeon, Emma Wilson, and she was this brilliant woman, brilliant ast uh, astronaut, and she has been her dream to really see the space station, to work there, to ex do experiments, to observe Earth from space and all, her, all of her dream came true. However, something really started to go off when one of the experiments, uh, a culture of fungi started to behave really, really strangely in the, the microgravity sort of environment. Chief investigator down on earth told her to incinerate the culture samples and um, basically dump them into space. And she thought nothing of that and she did that. Then one of the astronauts, a Japanese astronaut, started to fall sick and his symptoms are deteriorating quite rapidly. Um, and this is a really interesting part. The descriptions of the physical illness, the symptoms, the gradations from mild to serious is really, really well done. And I, as I said before, because of her medical background, she was able to describe those with a sense of reality and sense of urgency that was quite difficult to capture if you haven't been a doctor or a medical student. So I really appreciate, appreciate and also enjoyed the descriptions. So the Japanese astronaut dies. There's, there was nothing that the uh, Emma Watson, the physician, could have done differently. So in order to retrieve the body back to Earth to do autopsy, NASA sent another space shuttle to come and collect the body. Now something happened. This body of the Japanese uh, astronaut, they shoved him into a secure area in this uh, shuttle, but they have to, because of the weather system, they have to uh, docking with the International Space Station for at least 24 hours. Th something happened to that body, resulted in the infestation of all of those on board this rescue shuttle or a collecting shuttle. None of these people unfortunately survive and as they went back to Earth, a military organization took the matter off NASA's hands because there is some conspiracy going on. The military organization know exactly what was going on. NASA, on the other hand, is in the blind. Anyway, go back to the International Space Station. Her colleagues start to fall ill one by one a sense of helplessness was depicted really, really artfully in this novel throughout. Uh, it was really amazing. I truly enjoyed it. There are moments, quite a lot of them, of brilliant medical writing, brilliant despair. Some of the NASA uh, launch procedures was captured just to the perfection. I, I, there's no way she could have written this book without 
carried out extensive, and I mean extensive researches. I can't imagine how, how many hours, how many days, weeks, months even, that she has taken to, in order to write this book. And it is a shame that this brilliant novel isn't well known by more people. I think it is absolutely brilliant. As I said, I enjoyed it tremendously. In fact, this is my second time reading this novel. And here I want to just wonder a little bit about human memory and uh, the distortion that it can really play on your mind. I remember reading it the first time and I remember vividly in my mind that the most memory parts of the first reading of the novel many, many years ago was just how intense the launch of the shuttle was. And that is the part that I remembered the most vividly. When I started reading the second of, uh, second time, I was really looking forward to that part and to enjoy that intensity of, of the nervous system, of, of how nervous you become as the, the shuttle uh, launched into space. I remember I was so nervous reading sentence by sentence just hoping everything will go to the plan. The second time I read this, I don't get that intensity at all. So it's really interesting, you know, the, the tricks that our memory can really play uh, with us. Uh, you know, this is so vivid. I remember so vividly the launch of the shuttle, how intense it was. Second time I read it, read it, it was like, mm, okay. The other thing is, and this is perhaps more, uh, more even better to illustrate my point, was that I remember before the second reading of this novel that the main, the, the main protagonist, Emma Morrison, the, the, the physician, she dies. When I <laughs> finished reading the second note, the, the second time, she remains alive and it was a happy ending. I remember it was a terrible ending the first time. It was like everybody dies. I can't, I can't believe just the gap of the discrepancy between my, my memory and what actually happened. It's weird, isn't it? But anyway, so I loved it. Definitely a five-star book. It really sort of explores the fear that confronts humans. It's contrasting objects. What I mean by that is we are, we are fearful by the microbial world of bacteria and viruses, but also literally the largest thing known to us, and that's the space. So you've got this contrast, the smallest of beings and the largest of objects known to men. And we squeezed somewhere in the middle of those spectrum is vulnerable to both of them. And I think that's the, the central essence of this novel. And it was really done really, really well. The biggest strength of this book, however, as I said before, is her medical knowledge. And she was able to reconstruct the scenes as if we have the privilege to be invited into the ER or the A&E room and witnesses the crisis firsthand. And I always loved the way that she was able to carry out such a delicate operation for us to witness. It's just amazingly done. And in a typical Tess Garrison style, there's no flowery language. There's no unnecessary unnecessary long words. Everything was straight to the point, succinct, do the job. And, and I think, in many aspects, thriller, in order to grasp your attention all the time, needs to be a structure like this. If you haven't read any of Taz Garrison's book, I would definitely recommend to start with this one. It's a standalone novel, unlike The Surgeon and um, The Apprentice. That series of novels is still going on and is centered on um, a two brilliant detectives. Read The Surgeon as well. Surgeon was amazing, one of the scariest crime novels uh, and brilliantly carried out. I loved it. And if you like medical drama, it has tons of it. Um, absolutely amazing. So yes, guys, that's the end of this review. And I hope you enjoy this review. Um, I try to keep it short and sweet. If you haven't already, please help out by uh, subscribing to this channel. Give it like uh, to help out with the YouTube algorithm. To help me grow this channel. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I will bring the next one very, very soon. Until next time, cheerio.